please welcome to the stage, Joe Pera. about this door. <laughs> Some, something pretty big could come through this door. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming out tonight. I put together a little intro in hopes that we can start the show on a good note. Because, uh, hello. Uh, my name is Joe Para, and my favorite food is rolls. But I also enjoy a good house salad with Thousand Island dressing. <laughs> However, you didn't come here to hear me talk about what I like to eat. You came to have the wildest night of your life. <laughs> You came here to find love. <laughs> you came because you know that this is the closest you can get to seeing Rick Steves do comedy. <laughs> you came because for a couple hours, you don't want to think about the potential for nuclear war. <laughs> but if you do get blown up, you want to be amongst 600 people who find similar things funny. You came because you learned how to speak English from my adult swim show in Brazil. <laughs> Obrigado. <laughs> you came because your crush from work asked if you wanted to go to the Joe Paris show. <laughs> and you said, who's that? <laughs> and your friend said, it's, uh, the slow comedy man. <laughs> that sounds good, you said. The only comedy I've ever seen is Ryan Reynolds' Mint Mobile commercials. <laughs> I'm not vaccinated, is that okay? You came because you wanted to find a little bit of peace on a Thursday night, since you're no longer allowed in church after refusing to acknowledge the Apostle Paul. <laughs> you want value for your entertainment dollar, and you know I'm going to leave it all on the stage tonight. <laughs> It's a lot of pressure to put on one guy, but parentheses, uh, takes water bottle, <laughs> uh, chugs it like a TikTok teen, to do my freaking best. <laughs> Alright. Suppose I should probably
probably do some jokes. <laughs> a few Sundays ago, I got home late to find that my roommates, Bill and Thomas, had gone to bed early, taking care to be rested for the upcoming week. Opening my freezer door to get an ice for an ice water, I saw that all four trays were empty. <laughs> so what did I do? I filled them up. <laughs> because come Monday morning, there's going to be cubes for my boys. <laughs> for my boys. <laughs> was a difficult few months after the Dahmer show came out on Netflix. <laughs> I was getting texts and emails from people I haven't heard from in over a decade saying that the guy on Dahmer's show looks and sounds like you. <laughs> a couple kids on the street even said, hey, Dahmer. <laughs> uh, I'll be honest, if I did even half of the stuff that Jeffrey Dahmer did, my dad would be so pissed off. <laughs> Open relationships are becoming more popular. <laughs> That's the modern times. But I guess my thinking is that if you've got extra love to spare, you should consider opening up your relationship to a foster child. <laughs> Before you get another lover, become a big brother. <laughs> That's what I say. If you got a foster kid and you still got love to spare after that, do it you on. <laughs> a couple summers ago, I was in the park and I was feeding bits of pita chip to a squirrel. <laughs> Breaking off pieces and tossing them to him. I was amazed by the way that he would pick up and hold the bits of pita chip with his two paws almost as if he were a little human. <laughs> it's a, quite a different experience than, say, feeding the ducks. <laughs> um, I was having a great time, but eventually I started to wonder what would happen if I tossed him an entire pita chip, because for you or me, that'd be about the same as <laughs> picking up and holding a full-size table. <laughs> I figured, what the heck? <laughs> so I tossed them a full-size pita chip, and uh, what do you think happened? <laughs> uh, anybody on this side of the room? I say no. No. I don't think he could do it. Okay. Uh, 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 based on anything, or just a gut feeling? He's never been so lucky to get a full pita chip from a human being, like Joe Pera. That's very nice. Uh, I don't know. You know that when this goes online, the YouTubers are going to really <laughs> respond cringe, 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 cringe. <laughs> Knowing that, do you stand by that answer? I do. Okay. 
All right, you signed the release form, right? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Well, thank you. Anybody in the back? What's that? <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Steroids. Steroids? <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> hey, What's that? Lifestyle inflation. Lifestyle inflation. So do you think the squirrels they will pick up and hold the pita chip? <laughs> Super squirrel. <laughs> Steroids. Lifestyle inflation. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked uh, the doorman to bonk everybody over the head on the way in the door. Um, I'm not trying to bust anybody's brain. Do you, just, do you think the squirrels able to pick up the pita chip or too heavy? Yes, sir. And the striped shirt? Yes. Yes? That that is a beautiful answer. <laughs> All right. Uh, before this goes completely off the rails, how about we put it to a vote? Uh, if you think the squirrel is able to pick up and hold the entire pita chip, do you want to raise your hand? You think it was just too heavy? You want to raise your hand? Okay. That's interesting enough. Uh, but I'm excited to tell you that if you raised your hand in the first group, you are correct. <laughs> Not only was the squirrel able to pick up and hold the entire pizza chip, he then carried it up a tree using only his hind legs and went out onto a branch where he proceeded to eat the entire thing. <laughs> One of the most amazing things I've ever seen. having a great time watching it, and he was eating almost the entire thing. Eventually, I started to wonder again, if he could do an entire pita chip, what else? <laughs> so I took the can of Diet Dr. Pepper I was drinking, <laughs> I set it at the foot of the tree, and uh, what do you think happened? <laughs> Hands shot up in the balcony. Good question. About three quarters of the way full. I had just gotten it from the convenience store about 30 minutes before, so it wasn't, wasn't warm, but it wasn't cold either. Fair enough. Anybody else? Yes, sir, in the middle with the checkered shirt. just received quite a bit of vocal support. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Well, we put it to vote one more time. If you think the squirrel is able to pick up and hold the soda, do you want to raise your hand? Okay. Just a few. If you think you ignored it or left it alone, raise your hand. It seems like the majority of you. You think it knocked it over and used it to wash down the, so the <laughs> pita chip? You want to raise your hand? Okay. I'll tell you the answer, and it's that I don't know. <laughs> I stayed and watched for a little while, 
but I was with the woman in the park that afternoon. Eventually, we had to get going someplace, and I didn't want to insist we stick around and <laughs> her think I was a squirrel pervert. Later that night, and you can do this too, you can go on YouTube and search Squirrel Dr. Pepper. <laughs> and the video comes up called Squirrel Likes Dr. Pepper. <laughs> and in this video, which seems to be shot on a cell phone in a classroom, judging by the surroundings, the squirrel approaches a can of regular Dr. Pepper that's been left out on a windowsill puts its arms out to try and pick it up, but the can proves just too heavy. It knocks it off the windowsill, and then the squirrel goes with it. <laughs> Don't worry, great squirrels can survive falls up to 100 feet. <laughs> but it proved the two things that I was thinking. Uh, one, the squirrels are amazing animals. And two, Dr. Pepper is an amazing drink. <laughs> He gave me an idea for a Dr. Pepper animal commercial. In it, a man is playing fetch in the park with his dog. The Labrador brings him back the ball. And he's so proud of it that he cracks open an ice cold can of Dr. Pepper. He pours it in the dog's bowl. <laughs> the dog drinks it up and then turns into a human woman. <laughs> The guy goes, <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then the tagline comes up that says, Dr. Pepper turns dogs into human women. <laughs> I'm very nervous, but I'll throw it to you guys one more time. <laughs> Do you think this is true? <laughs> no one wants to take a stab? <laughs> so what do you think? <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you that it's not true. <laughs> I couldn't believe advertisements and uh, feel responsible at the end of the joke to tell you, please not give Dr. Pepper to your dogs because <laughs> if you do, they will die. <laughs> I was uh, thinking about where our country went wrong. There's a few instances, sure. Well, the one that stands out to me was when in 2003, William Hung auditioned for American Idol. <laughs> and 28 million American viewers laughed at an immigrant man doing his best. <laughs> uh, there was nothing wrong with him. I looked it up, but you saw... <laughs> You saw the footage, it very well could have been. And still, we laughed. It might be too far to say that because of that, we deserve the situation we're in. <laughs> but maybe if we were a little nicer, the Sopranos movie would have been better. wasn't the worst film, but I do feel that it wasn't quite the Sopranos movie our country needed. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, uh, deep down... It's okay, don't sweat it. We will reset it. Okay. All good? Okay. Don't feel it, you just ruined my entire life. <laughs> I'm 
unfortunately, uh, deep down, I've got the sense that I'm the type of guy whose wife dies young. <laughs> just look at these features. They're just waiting to be filled with grief. I'll have only a few moments in the bathroom each morning after my alarm clock wakes me from yet another dream of her telling me to just move on. <laughs> to wash the sorrow from my face so that I don't spread it to my daughter Jessie before she heads to the second grade. <laughs> For just one morning, I wish I could hide it completely as I make her her favorite breakfast. A uh, five-egg omelet <laughs> with a 12-ounce ham steak. <laughs> Jessie is unbelievably strong. <laughs> is Big and strong as a D1 football player. And on the evenings in which I fall asleep watching regular season hockey, she'll carry me to bed. <laughs> it won't be easy, but day by day, me and my oxen of a daughter <laughs> will get by. In short, uh, ladies, do not come talk to me after the show. <laughs> Stay away if you want to live. <laughs> Only men can come talk to me after the show. <laughs> I'm sorry for many parts of that joke, but... Sorry, because I do have a girlfriend now who is resigned to her fate. <laughs> Believe it or not, the New York Times asked me to write a piece for their dating and sex column. <laughs> I don't know why. I figured I'd share my current draft with you tonight, if that's okay. It begins. I have a girlfriend now, but I was not born that way. I had to do it through dating. Please don't sigh. Dates are an opportunity to meet and learn about a new person. Share what you know about trees and Irish mythology. <laughs> and they can lead to relationships and intimacy. Personally, though, you know what I like more than intimacy? A big whiteboard on which to organize my thoughts. <laughs> to-do list on the right side, ideas for public transportation on the left. <laughs> In the upper corner, a postcard my friend sent me from St. Louis. Rules are rules. If you want to do a relationship, you got to do the dates. And really, they're not so bad. First you meet, you kiss on both cheeks. <laughs> then you can find out most of what you need to know from two questions. What did you eat for breakfast? When was the last time you were in a physical altercation? <laughs> After that, you have as much fun as possible. A few years ago, I went out with a corporate lawyer. And I think she had an all right time because she only pulled out her IBM ThinkPad once. <laughs> In some ways, I have a lot of respect for lawyers. They are smart and work hard and could read for long periods of time without having to use the bathroom. <laughs> it's another world, though. 
My dad had just started at a big firm and told me that she had to ask her boss's permission to not work that night from 9.30 to 11.30 p.m. Because of this, I felt bad telling her that I spent my day going to the Spectrum store in person because I had the time and paying my bill online was confusing. <laughs> I wanted to see where internet comes from <laughs> and meet the individuals that make it possible. <laughs> and then I got a pre-made sandwich and ate it while walking through Greenwood Cemetery across the street. And don't worry, I know what you were thinking, but it was during the day. <laughs> I am not a goth. I was excited for the date. Believe it or not, she asked me out, bringing up Nick's first head in a U.S. Supreme Court case from 1893, which ruled that, for tariff reasons, tomatoes would be classified as vegetables. I said yes enthusiastically, because I'm crazy about facts and details. But looking back, I should have seen the red flag. As you and I know, tomatoes are a ripened flower ovary, bearing seeds. They are fruit. <laughs> the case is yet another example of American law's frequent indifference to nature, science, and common sense morality in service of economics. <laughs> I'm sorry, you bought a ticket to a stand-up show, not a one-man play called Peeve. But lately, I have been wondering if all of the laws and lawyers are necessary. I mean, if there were no laws, I would still make my bed every day because it's the right thing to do. <laughs> Plus, deep down, I sense there's something different between me and lawyers because none of the lawyers I meet think it's a funny idea to serve papers to their friends as a joke. <laughs> If I were a lawyer, I would always be suing my friends. <laughs> I kept this to myself on the date and even feel bad talking about it now, especially because she was nice and it wasn't unpleasant. We talked about sci-fi books and music, and then she mentioned she was interested in space law. <laughs> space law? I said... Please tell me everything you know about space law. <laughs> as wonderful as it sounds, it's more or less just trying to privatize everything in space. Right now, it's claiming satellite trajectories, but soon enough, it'll be buying property rights on the moon, drilling rights on asteroids and planets. Since they have already patented 20% of the human genome, I asked, Will they try to claim metaphysical properties as well, like gravity? They'll try, she said. She's probably right, but the casual way she said it made me no longer hungry for my drink. <laughs> Later on, I walked her to her train. She asked me to call some time, and I nodded, but didn't say anything as she went down the stairs. My own train stop was a few blocks away, but it was a nice night and when I got to it, kept walking. Stars were out, and looking up, I wondered which ones they'd claim first. Why does the space law stuff upset me, I thought. Maybe because I associate space with new beginnings and possibility, but am I really that naive? The original space race didn't come from scientific curiosity. We went to the moon to prove military and ideological superiority. <laughs> and explorers before that, like Lewis and Clark, they recorded hundreds of new species, such as the buffalo berry. But their maps helped in the stealing of Western land through force and legal treaties. Unless aliens have a hotshot lawyer like my cousin Vinny, Why will space be any different? And why am I going around on dates telling the truth, looking for a meaningful relationship? I should be trying to fuck. <laughs>
just hitting it from the back. <laughs> you know, real nasty like. I can make you come, and my lawyer, Bob Reinhardt, will put that in writing. <laughs> what do you want? Do you want the moon? I'll uh, fucking buy it for you. <laughs> we'll mine it for all it's worth, and when we get a divorce, we'll fucking blow it up and each take half. <laughs> but mine will be a bit bigger because my lawyer, Bob Reinhardt, is a legal rock star. <laughs> I want to own that. I want to own that. I want to own that ass. <laughs> the urge to own, dominate, fuck. That's our survival instinct. We got to fuck to survive. And if we're going to survive long term, we got to go to space. Who cares if it's because we are trying to own shit and fuck? <laughs> you might say we don't deserve to survive if that's what we're about. I'll tell you what I'm about. Straight up giving earth-shattering orgasms <laughs> and then leaving immediately. <laughs> so I can go hang out with my friend and lawyer, Bob Reinhardt. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't need to say friend. It is implied when I say lawyer. By the way, I know how I will die. 20 people in my house shooting me. <laughs> like Tony Montana. Say hello to my little friend, Bob Reinhardt. <laughs> then he runs out and they shoot him too. <laughs> we die together. just happened. <laughs> uh, how do I explain this? Before the show, I uh, took the pill from Limitless. since I took it pretty far, I might as well tell you the story of how I lost my virginity. <laughs> when I was uh, 20 years old, I offered to walk Bonnie Morrison home from the barn dance. <laughs> I was very nervous, but it was a beautiful night, so I suggested we take a shortcut home through a cornfield, which turned into a long cut, if you know what I mean. <laughs> the next day, I was shipped off to World War II. <laughs> That's a true story. A couple of years later, I found myself fighting at the Battle of the Bulge, <laughs> surrounded by Nazis on all sides, under heavy artillery fire. It didn't seem like we were going to make it out. So I got down and I said, please, if you allow me to survive this and maybe another 80 to 100 more years, I promise to become an alternative comedian <laughs> at the tail end of the second comedy boom. <laughs> uh, that's how I got here tonight.
don't want to end the show on a blue note. Perhaps <laughs> something more pleasant. So I figured maybe we close out by doing some new material meant to talk you to sleep that I've been working on with my friend and composer, Ryan Dan. Supposed to be another hot summer in New York. Everywhere, in fact. And these past two summers were some of the hottest in recorded history, according to Copernicus Climate Change Service in the EU. It's a bit cooler tonight, thank goodness. But if you want, uh, close your eyes and imagine it's one of those nights in August in which it's too hot to even have an appetite for dinner. And so, after sweating all day, you come home and are now sweating in bed. Your air conditioner is making a lot of noise, but not a lot of cool air. Having a tough time getting the temperature to the 60 to 67 degree range, doctors say is ideal for sleep. And imagine your partner next to you, Yubi, is having a difficult time too. Every time you're about to doze off, UB changes positions, kicking you in the face. <laughs> it wasn't easy, but you've gone accustomed to their preferences of sleeping head to toe. <laughs> it's a cultural thing for UB, who's more or less a benevolent version of the Babadook. <laughs> I've been there. When someone keeps you from sleep, uh, makes you reconsider everything about your relationship. But take a moment to remember the reasons why you are sharing a bed with them tonight. Perhaps they are good at writing letters. Perhaps they helped you through a rough time. Perhaps they were the person who taught you to not wash your face with hand soap. Or maybe it's because they were the tallest person you'd ever seen and you knew you'd have to have them. <laughs> and so, uh, for the sake of your relationship, you get out of bed and head to the other room using your cell phone as a flashlight. Believe it or not, Ryan has a PhD in sound effects. <laughs> cool breezes are wonderful in summer. Don't even get me started on sprinklers. When it comes down to it, it cannot be a cold drink. They know this in southern India where they drink spiced buttermilk to beat the heat. However, you are not in Bangalore, so you head to the fridge to get some ice for a water. Ah. <laughs> Remember when you used to live with the guys? <laughs> Cubes for my boys. <laughs> Not anymore. Now more like hot bed with Yubi. <laughs> the place you moved in together has a fancy pants fridge with a nice maker in the door. But it's sad. You can no longer even make ice for the people you care about. 
uh, tech has taken that from us too. <laughs> and it was nice to open the freezer door when you were hot. Feel the cold on your face and hear it too. And even if you couldn't feel the chill, I think the freezer hum would still sound cold. How would you describe the cold sound? That's okay. <laughs> Here are the coldest sounds that Ryan could find. Those are actually recordings from the inside of a hedge fund manager's heart. Ryan, what does the uh, hot sound like? <laughs> Gotta turn the air conditioning up after that one. It's wild to think how recent the development of electric air conditioning really is. Compared to 88% today, only 46% of U.S. homes had A.C. in 1975. And in 1902, no one had it, because that's when it was invented by an engineer out of Buffalo named Willis Carrier, who developed an apparatus for treating air for a publishing house in Brooklyn. Fun fact, he's buried in the same Buffalo cemetery as Rick James. <laughs> I'd love to catch those ghosts having a chat. <laughs> what about the billions of people who lived before 1902? How did they stay cool? Well, the Persians used wind towers that captured and drew breezes into buildings and then out the other side. The Romans circulated water through the walls of their homes. The Native Americans in Southwest Colorado built their houses into the face of canyons so that they'd be shaded from the sun. However, for many cultures, the go-to is simple, just dealing with it. Uh, maybe God didn't intend for people to live in Phoenix. The devil did. <laughs> well, lucky for you, you got nice water, which you finish on your way back to bed. Oh, important to know you are wearing your summer style pajamas, i.e. just the top. <laughs> you get back in the bed and almost immediately you beat turns over and kicks you. <laughs> you of course can't kick your partner back. When you think about signing them up for UFC, so perhaps Rose Nama Yunez can kick them for you. <laughs> Here's a question for you. Uh, does finding the right temperature determine if a relationship will survive? Uh, any couples here uh, argue about heating and air conditioning? Yes. Yes? yes. Who wants it? What do you ask for? Really? And he wants it hot. Yes. And uh, how do you guys uh, work it out? It's cold. <laughs> that's, that's a girl boss moment if I ever heard one. So what do, what, do, what do you do, sir? Did you just freeze, or? He deals with it? Like by putting on a sweatshirt, or you just, yeah? Okay. Has it ever come uh, close to tearing your relationship apart? No. No? Okay. Just 
just out of curiosity, what would you say holds your relationship together? <laughs> she does. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> Just kind of hanging out in the relationship. <laughs> she calls the shots, but she's got all the responsibilities too. And you're just hanging out playing PS2. He's the wallet. So you go work hard, make money during the day, and then come home and freeze? <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> men, men should freeze? Fair enough. And, you, and you're another guy who gets chilled out every evening? Really? It's a nice, and you just kind of deal with it too. I have no choice. <laughs> Dude, out of the couch. Out of the couch. Couch isn't always the worst. It's kind of like uh, taking a little. It's like a vacation home in your own house. <laughs> how long? How many years have you been freezing? Forty. <laughs> Wow, 38 years, okay. Wow, this is interesting. Usually it's a little bit flipped that the gentlemen like the heat cold, or the, the air conditioning and the women want the temp, but all right, any other cold women in the crowd? <laughs> they are. Uh, do you guys argue about the heat and air conditioning? Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, who wants it hot and who wants it cold? Weird. <laughs> okay. Wow, I had no idea that all uh, these all of the women, and, uh, female fans of mine are trying to freeze their husbands to death. <laughs> Make them sluggish. personally feel that finding the right temperature together does help a great bit. Whether it be in the warm bed on a winter night or front porch with a breeze. Actually, attack with porches. All you need is two of those white plastic chairs placed directly in the driveway or on the sidewalk in front of your home. Just good molded plastic chairs. With armrests, you will be the working class king and queen of your block. That's what my grandparents used to do. Same as they would have done in the living room, they would sit outside and not talk. <laughs> Maybe that's the key. Just have five kids and work your body to arthritis so that you can be completely content sitting still together. <laughs> However, I'm not ready for a kid, but I do want a cow so freaking bad. <laughs> I love goats, want to buy one for my niece without her parents' permission. <laughs> but personally, I want a cow. This was decided last summer while petting one named Henrietta at the Sawyer County Fair. A tuff of brown hair atop her head, I learned that Henrietta was an American brown Swiss. Not only are there handsome cows, but their milk has a perfect fat to protein ratio for cheese making. Plus, ever since I was young, I've wanted a 1,300 pound friend. <laughs> because as they say, a life cannot be measured in money, but by the total mass of your friends. So my wish is that everyone in the world could have a cow. Spiced buttermilk on warm evenings for everyone. Not only that, but on nights you can't sleep, you can go outside and talk to your cow. 
bend your ear for a carrot, Henrietta? You pat her side and you tell her how the city has been taking it out of you more than usual this summer. It's hot and it smells and there's no peace except in sleep which you can't seem to find. You can't even go for a walk without being advertised to or recorded by cameras in those Link NYC kiosks. <laughs> and even in the park, planes buzz overhead. I got it pretty good, you tell your cow, but am I truly free here if I will be arrested for peeing outside? <laughs> and will I ever feel completely comfortable sharing a bed with you, Bee? Henrietta says nothing and continues chewing her carrot. Don't take this the wrong way, girl, but I wish I had your sweet cow ignorance. You have no idea you hasten the warming each time you pass gas. <laughs> but I'm aware that I do when I turn on my AC. I wish I could pretend you're all right, Joe, says you be, and turns to face you in bed. Not able to sleep either? No, it's too hot. The AC is too loud, and I don't have a retired dairy cow. Sorry to complain. <laughs> Yubi gets up and disappears out the door. You hear the rumble of the fridge, and Yubi comes back with an ice cube. Here, Yubi says, and puts it in your hand. Hold it. Can you feel the coldness in your hand going up your arm? And you can't help but laugh because you remember that you be learned English by watching Do the Right Thing. <laughs> Move it to your other hand, Yubi says. Can you feel the chill go up the left side of your body as well? Now put it on your forehead. You do, and the cold radiates through your head and then the rest of your body as well. As it melts, your worry does too. It's magic, you say. No, says Yubi. It's ice. <laughs> Thanks, Yubi. I'm glad to be in a relationship with you. You hold sweaty hands and fall asleep like you are dead. <laughs> the hum of your air conditioner blends with all the air conditioners on your block, and those join with the hum of the air conditioners in your neighborhood, which join the chorus of all the air conditioners in New York City. And if uh, you didn't fall asleep in the crowd, um, I wish you a good night. A round of applause for Ryan Dan. And thank you. Thank you for coming out tonight. Feel free to touch the ice on your way out.